Sea of Thieves Season 11 is almost here, and among the various new updates, such as new treasure, a revamped quest UI, tutorials, and cosmetics, there's one feature that's going to change Sea of Thieves forever. And I believe there's a hidden message that Rare is telling its players through this new mechanic. But will it be a good thing for the game and its established community? Are they the same in terms of importance, or does one outweigh the other? Let's dig deeper. For us to understand the situation we're in today, we need to look back from the beginning. It may come as a surprise for some new folks, but Sea of Thieves has been around since 2018, and the game you're playing today is not the same game that was around back then. It launched, and though there was excitement from avid fans, it was not well received by the critics. But Rare had already known that the game still needed a ton of work, and its lead faces, Joe Neat and Mike Chapman, talked candidly about what was going on and what was being done to course correct. Personally, I love this style of communication and wish we had more of it today. Patch after patch came through, more being added or corrected in the game each time. About a year in, the anniversary update was launched. We had cursed cannibals and PC skeleton ships in a full storyline that was part puzzle solving and part action. And then of course, there was the arena. If you're unfamiliar, the arena was the game's competitive mode before Hourglass today. And let's be clear, at the time, there was a deep belief that Sea of Thieves could be a competitive game rivaling other battle royales. The original version had players receiving treasure maps that led to Sea Dog's chests to collect and turn in while trying to take out their rivals. And it was glorious. It definitely had its issues as well, which we'll get to later. The other major boon to Sea of Thieves was the introduction of the Fort of the Damned. In fact, I'd argue that Arena and Fort of the Damned hard carried Sea of Thieves for at least a year. Meanwhile, bits and pieces would be added to the game. The Emissary System in Ships of Fortune, the Ashen Lords as part of Ashen Winds and Treasure Vaults and Vaults of the Ancients. A fair reminder to all that this was all being completed amid a global pandemic and practically everyone, including Rare, was working from home. So if nothing else, they deserve a ton of respect for that alone. Eventually, monthly updates got to be a bit much and Rare introduced seasons into the game complete with battle passes. The intent here was to increase the length of time and development so bigger updates could be released. In Season 1, the system was built out while in Season 2, it was all about the newly released Fort of Fortune. But no one expected what would be coming in Season 3, myself included. Because going on that journey through Dead Man's Grotto, through Sailor's Grave, ending up on the Ferry of the Damned itself, and come to find out that the one and only Jack Sparrow was now in the Sea of Thieves is still something I smile at on occasion when I have to pass and fall. Only, I think that's where our problems really get amplified. Let me explain. It was an impossible situation. You've just released a crowning achievement through a partnership with one of the biggest and most recognizable corporations in the world to license its characters from one of the most recognizable franchises in existence, and your follow-up to that in the next season is to go visit some shrines. And then afterwards, in the next season, you'll give everyone fireworks and let players bury their treasure and put it on a board that everyone will obviously use, right? Rare couldn't top that moment, and there's no shame in that. A Pirate's Life had brought in the most players since the launch of the game three years earlier, but the follow-up updates were not what new players needed and not what experienced players wanted. Rare was caught between a rock and a hard place. I believe that's why they decided to mix things up a bit with their new approach in 2022. Over the course of the year, we would have time-limited adventures, little bits of story that players could participate in. On top of that, there would be mysteries afoot. Rare even went so far as to lay out a now infamous roadmap, detailing out some of the concepts they had in mind. Now, I don't mind a bit of shaking up, I think it's good to do something different on occasion, but because of this shakeup and to focus their attention on adventure, Rare decided that Arena had to go. Now, by this point, Arena was a shell of its former self. Many devout Arena players would agree. A combination of toxicity, technical difficulties, and in general, the broken gameplay loop were just 
too much work for Rare to commit to fixing. But I don't think anyone felt good about this, player or developer. For many though, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. If you looked at the player statistics coming out of Steam, you'd see a huge drop at this time. The same would hold true for Twitch viewership as well. And let's not get started on the deluge of is Sea of Thieves dying videos that would start to regularly hit YouTube at this point. But it was obvious that something needed to change. And it did. Starting with Season 7, the focus became less on the world at large and more on building the foundational systems that would drive a player base, old and new, moving forward. That's where the captaincy system came into play. This had actually been something that had been discussed internally at Rare and was planned for an earlier update during the first year, but the scramble to put out the fires in year one had pushed this particular feature off until now. On top of that, when the introduction of the Sovereigns to Sea of Thieves, the idea was starting to build that a more casual type of experience was something that, while not directly encouraged, was more readily made available to players at large. In Season 8, emphasis was placed on PvP once again with the debuting Hourglass, but this time utilizing the same features as Adventure, ensuring that everyone was localized in one game mode. Players could now go at each other and jump into combat far quicker than Arena ever could, but this mode hasn't been without its difficulties though. Competition does bring out the worst in people sometimes, and many reports of toxicity persist today. On top of this, the release of a new competitive mode brought a heavy spotlight on the cheater community, which had been around in some fashion since the game's launch, but hard toggled with the launch of Hourglass. This is a problem that persists in various waves today, and the sooner this gets solved, the better. Unfortunately, not every update was sunshine and rainbows. I do give credit to Season 9 for a couple of things. For one, it rebalanced all world events to scale and difficulty. As a primarily a solo player, this was a godsend. On top of that, it gave us auto harpoons that would just drop goods on the deck when taken from the sea. Notice that both updates once again cater to the idea that a player would prefer to make things as easy as possible for themselves, regardless of whether they were in a larger crew or not. This was more foundation. However, Season 9 was originally meant to debut guilds, as we can see from the roadmap originally posted. Guilds had proven to be a more cumbersome system than anticipated, so its debut was pushed back. And then Season 9 would go on to be extended from March to October 2023. This was obviously not an ideal situation, and an unfortunate casualty in all of this, I feel, was The Legend of Monkey Island Tall Tales. I'll go on record here. Even though the Pirates of the Caribbean characters are more well known, I prefer the Monkey Island Tall Tales. Bringing in the original voice actors from this game franchise and building out its lore within the Sea of Thieves sandbox was amazing. But from the beginning, many put its status up against Pirates of the Caribbean and came away disappointed. Personally, I believe having come during an already longer than normal season, I don't believe it got a fair shake. So if you haven't taken the opportunity to do them yet, I encourage you to do so. In October, we finally moved on to season 10 and with that came more systems. First, we had guilds, offering players the opportunity to earn with each other in a collective. Now, the system is bare bones for now, but that's not to say it always will be. The Skull of Siren song is a fantastic conception, and once the Skull gives an emissary credit, then I do feel that the voyage will have a great potential spark to light on the seas if you're looking for some combat. And for those who don't, who just prefer to take their time, Rare decided to release Safer Seas. And now that we're a couple months into that update, I do think there are some use cases for Safer Seas. But Safer Seas does come with penalties, so I'll stick to High Seas myself. And that brings us to now. In Season 11, we're seeing the culmination of around two years of foundational layering gameplay systems. But for what purpose? I believe. It's because Rare never wants to experience another situation as with what happened with a pirate's life again. If they had an opportunity at a sudden rise in player population due to some specific event, say the release of a pirate's life 2, or even a cross-platform arrival on the PlayStation consoles, all of these systems would now work in tandem to provide a much better experience for a newer player. Now, is the experienced player harmed by this? They can use the same mechanics and systems as the new player, 
but I can understand the frustration in thinking that there hasn't really been much content developed for them lately. Here's the thing. In many cases, these players would move on to other games. But there are no other games like Sea of Thieves. Trust me. I have tried in the past to make a switch. I kept coming back to Sea of Thieves because of the unique experience it provides. And I feel like other players feel almost forced to stick around. So what's the hidden message from Rare? I believe that all of this is telling us that they're in it for the long haul. They've built out all of these systems for a growing player base and that experienced players should hold on just a little bit more because development is gonna swing back their way soon. And if you don't take it from me, take it from Chapman himself. This is John Bardcore signing off, saying so long and take care.